Hello, hello, Crafty Cradle fam. It has been a while, and today I have something fun for us to explore. They are these magic popcorn color markers. I saw these on actually a Hope Scope video, and I was super curious. So they are basically just markers that are activated with heat, and then they are supposed to puff up to form really cool kind of popcorn textures. Now, when Hope Scope did this, she was not able to just use her hair dryer as it appears to be pictured here. She had to use a heat gun. So I've got both, I'm gonna test both, and I am super curious what we can do with these puppies. So without any further ado, let's hop in. So I had actually opened just this one pen prior to this video. And so this is me attempting to get ink to flow out of it after it had been sitting. So I will just note that this process was difficult and we'll see how it goes with the rest of the pens as far as opening them fresh. But when I opened this one fresh, there was a bead of ink that just started spooling out of it. So after scribbling and pushing many times on the pen to try to get the ink to flow, uh, eventually we were able to get there. After scribbling a ton, I finally got some ink flow out of the tip again, and now it's almost too much ink flow. But I'm going to try to build up a nice solid swatch here. It's probably good. So like I said, I had opened that one previously, but this one I am just going to open for you now here on camera. So it comes with like this plastic guard over the tip. And once you remove that, which is rather difficult to do one handed, but I think we got it. There we go. There we go. So this one I squeezed and I was able to get more ink out. But with the red one, I didn't seem to be able to squeeze it to get more. It was just it, it was just constantly generating more ink out of the tip than I really wanted with no pressure whatsoever. So on this one, if I let up, it doesn't actually seem to be generated. So maybe the red one is just defective. Good to know. From there, I swatched the rest of them and did not experience that problem that I had with the red one again. So I do think that that problem is limited to just the red one in my package and hopefully none in yours if you buy these. Okay, so now we've got our base swatches. The green and the uh, white one for some reason got bubbles in them, but the rest of them look fine. The only one that I had that problem with was the red one. So I think the, my red one is just either had too much pressure build up in shipment or something. I mean, you can even see it here in the cap, like it is still spewing ink out. So I think the red one is just effective. The rest of them worked great. Um, I will say that that black is actually more of like a gray. Let me see if I can get you a better view of that. It's not like a true black. So the question now is, let's see if we can make them popcorn because that is the whole concept here. Now again, unfortunately, all the instructions are in Korean, so I don't know if I'm supposed to let it dry and then apply heat or if I'm just supposed to apply heat. But we're gonna try first with my hair dryer, which I always just keep at my art desk because I use it for painting all the time. If that doesn't work, <clears throat> then I do have a heat gun. So let's give them a try. I will spare you the sound of the hair dryer. But I tried this for about a minute. I made sure that it was very hot and, you know, directly on the colors. And unfortunately, this did not work. Um, it did serve to dry out the colors, but at no point did I get any puffing up or anything. So I just think that it's maybe not hot enough or not concentrated enough or maybe even just too much airflow. I'm not really sure what the problem is, but like I said, I actually saw this on Hope Scope's video as well. She was not able to get a hair dryer to work either. So if you've had these and you were able to get your hair dryer to work, I'd be curious what kind of hair dryer you have and what settings you had it on. Um, but personally, I was not able to get this to work at all. So I'm not seeing any popcorn texture and I'm not seeing any like, well, I guess maybe, is that all it's doing? So it's not puffing up, I guess is my point. Maybe it is getting somewhat of a popcorn texture, which if that's all it does, 
it looked a lot more impressive <laughs> in the other video. So let's try the heat gun and see what that does. Again, sparing you the noise from the heat gun. I will say that this A worked, which is great, but B, you can also really tell the directionality of the heat gun as you're applying it. So the areas where you apply the heat really kind of puff up pretty quickly. And then the areas that do not have the direct heat applied to them don't. So that's good to note if you're going to use these. Um, you definitely have to apply it for, you know, probably what we just saw, about 10 to 20 seconds for it to actually puff up. Wow. So the heat gun definitely worked better. Now, I will say, these little bits where there was just like a drip of the color puffed up really well. And you can hear... It's like a foam. The bits where I just did the swatching had mixed results. So they do, they've got that foamy texture. They're completely dry now, um, but they're not like super, let me see if I can pick this up. They're not super high, if you can tell. So I think what we need to do is build up like circles of color and then go from there. So next here, I'm just going to attempt something simple and we'll see how it goes. I want to see how they layer. So I'm going to just do the base of a smiley face and then we're going to put color on top of it and see how they layer. Um, super curious how this will turn out. It is somewhat difficult to get an even application of this. I mean, I'm doing the best that I can, but still anywhere that I actually run the pen over ends up not being quite as good. Then let's see if we can get like a drip. I feel like out of the red one we could, but maybe not out of this one. Nope, it's not gonna work. Okay, so we'll definitely have to build our black up afterwards. So let's puff up our yellow. All right, so the yellow is now dry and puffed up and now I'm gonna add the black and I wanna see about adding some white for a smile. Of course, once it was dry, I was able to get a really great drip for the eyeballs. And then just did the smile with some black, and then I filled it in with white, but I did not get to film that part. So I will say these do not mix well. You can kind of see there where I contaminated some of the white with the black. So if you're trying to do more than one color at a time, I would highly recommend kind of like letting it dry first or blowing it up and um, then doing your next color. I also sped up this footage for you, um, and I would say that this heating process took just a little bit longer. Uh, once it did puff up, though, I think that the results were really good. So I'm not sure if layers just take longer naturally or if it was just the way that I had the heat gun pointed that made it more difficult. You see, once I redirected it, it puffed up a lot more on the other side. That is more like it. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Okay, so now... See how high that is? Also, you can, oh, that's a good shot of how it's definitely more of a gray than a black. <laughs> um, it is very gray, but that looks cool. Very squishy, very fun. So now I wanna try something more three-dimensional. So it does specifically market these four cards. So I'm curious what it'll look like if I try to do, like, let's say that I knew somebody who was in tennis, for instance, and I knew that they really liked to play tennis. So I would try to make them like a 3D tennis ball out of this. In which case, I'm what I'm imagining is that I'm gonna do one layer, 
I'm gonna puff it up and then I'm gonna do another layer of the same color on top of it to try to make it like protrude further out away from the page, if that makes any sense. I will note that other than this one stubborn bubble, we are not getting nearly as many bubbles on the green this time, which is great. Although I'm not having any luck getting rid of the bubble. So I don't know, I don't know if it matters, honestly. Let's puff that up. Sped this footage up eight times for you. That was neat. So in the video, it looked like it was just creating like bubbles because you were almost seeing like the white of the page underneath, but no, it was creating like these little kind of scales almost. I think it'd be really fun to do a dinosaur next, but first let's finish this tennis ball. So I'm gonna go back in with the green on top of that and we'll see what we get. And again, this is eight times sped up so that you didn't have to wait here. So it's a little bit harder to control than I thought being in the middle. Um, I thought that I had concentrated most of the pigment in the middle, but actually we got most of our puffiness over here on this end, which is where I originally had the heat directed first. So I think you do have to be careful to direct your heat properly, but overall it did form a second layer. Like you can kind of see it. Very cool. So now we'll just do our white lines. It wasn't too bad drawing over this. However, there were a couple of spots where the pen caught in the dimples or where I did find it a little bit less straightforward than drawing on a flat surface, but overall not too bad as long as you're pushing down on the marker really hard. So it almost looks cool just leaving that honestly, but we'll puff it up because these are super fun. <laughs> Awesome. So overall, super impressed with that. It looks neat. This would make such a fun card for someone, absolutely. So now let's have some fun and make a, maybe a, a dinosaur. <clears throat> I think a dinosaur would be fun. Because of the generally scaly nature of a dinosaur, I thought that this would be a really fun little project to do this with. It would be really great for a kid's card or something. Um, just a really cute little puffy design for really to make anyone's day better, just to bring a smile to their face. I will say this is not the most comfortable thing on the planet. Like this actually hurts quite a bit. So. Be aware of that if you get these, that you don't want to be doing this for like long periods of time. It's not like a comfortable thing, um, but it is super fun and I think it is still worth it. You just want to be aware that you don't want to be doing this for hours on end. I also thought that it might be good to test some writing. So like if you wanted to use these for a card, it might be good to know how writing looks. So for instance, if I were doing like a happy birthday card, normally I would do some form of calligraphy like this. I should have taped the paper down, I apologize, but here we are. So like, let's just leave it as happy. You can imagine what birthday would look like and let's pop this up. So again, I did speed this up, but overall, I do think that this is a relatively quick process. It doesn't take too long for the heat gun to work. I am working on the first setting of my heat gun, so I'm not even on the, the second setting, which I think is hotter. So just so that you're aware, this is a standard like Black & Decker heat gun, and it works relatively quickly, about a minute. Leaving this clip in real time, it took about 23 seconds for the words to start puffing up. And again, you can see kind of the directionality. So as I moved from left to right, the puffiness got more pronounced. Overall, that looks super cool and it is still very legible. The dinosaur turned out pretty good. I will say that like some of the areas of purple didn't quite puff the same as the green. So they're not awesome, but you could always go back over it again with the purple to make them stand out more. So I think like as a base, it looks fine. You know, you just add more color, you puff it up again. 
overall, these are super fun. Like, what a great thing to have in your arsenal just to, like, add a personal touch. Let's try it now on a card that already exists, just adding some embellishments. So I have a couple of cards here. I know, you're shocked. They're penguins. Um, and I'm just going to kind of color over on these penguins, their little uh, snow items. And on this one, I'm going to do the scarf of the penguin and just see how that looks. It might look terrible. It might look cool. Let's find out. I will say that it is nice that they are relatively transparent so you can kind of see where you've gone and still see underneath like what you're doing with it. So that's super cool. Let's puff these up. I will say that this just ever so slightly warped the card paper. So if you are concerned about that, maybe these aren't the best thing on the planet. That said though, warping might not be that much of a concern because you are already puffing these up such that they're not going to really lay flat in a card anyway, and the warping was super minimal, so I mentioned it just as a word of caution, but I personally would not be affected by that. I would definitely still use this on any and all of my cards. Cardstock is heavier than normal paper, and all of the paper that I've used thus far has been Bristol board, by the way, so it is a thicker than average paper. It's not printer paper, just so that you are aware if you've watched this all the way through. Um, I am not using printer paper with these as I do believe that that would warp quite a bit more than this cardstock or the Bristol board. Oh my goodness. It's so cute. Particularly for the winter cards, because these are meant to be like cozy pieces of clothing. This adds so much. Because now it's like a fuzzy scarf. How cute. Oh, I love that. Even You can even tell, though, where I missed, which you could evidently see before, but that's awesome. Even with that, I don't. it doesn't even matter. It's cute. And then these, look at how well the earmuffs puffed up. Oh my goodness. All right. These are a huge win from me. I will definitely be using this for this very purpose in the future. Like, what a fun little element to add to greeting cards. Honestly, I love these. Magic popcorn color from Korea. I will try to leave a link to them down below. I bought them on Amazon. Again, I found them from a different video here on YouTube. I'll try to link that as well. If you're interested, go check them out. Otherwise... I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.